Hello? Hello? Hang on a minute, bloody hell. Let me get rid of the industrial noise there. <laughs> right. Uh, welcome back to Paint Like Fiend, the show that blends uh, incomprehensible commentary and frustratingly sped up painting in a way specifically tailored to make you learn almost nothing about how to paint. Well, maybe. Okay, so this time we're going to uh, focus on the uh, cloak or cloth at the back. Uh, quite a different colour to last time. It's going to be pale and muted. Uh, I've got a nice selection here. There's a visible, nice selection of colours throughout the spectrum there. It should provide some pretty natural uh, shading and highlighting. I'm going to keep this pale and muted. This is part of the aspect of, uh, of what I like about painting is when you have uh, new ideas, new colours, things to test out. You know, you see something in the shop like this and think, great, what can I paint? Kind of like a pale grey purple. You can try, uh, see how that colour works, see what techniques you can use with it. Uh, I find that quite inspiring. Better to, you know, more interesting to do that than to stick to the same colour. Give me uh, an army of bloody ultramarines or something and I'd get so bored of doing blue. But give me some fresh colours or a fresh model. I find this is good for keeping motivation up. Okay. So rebase coated that. Now what I'm going to do, this is actually one of the old foundation paints, which were awesome. Uh, what I'm going to do first is this is the colour I want to shade down to. I'm going to do it in stages. Now I thin this down a lot because it's a very strong paint. If I show you on here, I get a bit of normal paint in my brush. Like that covers so opaque. You know, these foundation paints were superb. So I've thinned it down quite a lot. And I'm just going to um, paint a little bit, almost like a, a controlled wash, into some of the recesses. This should hopefully not put too much paint on the model. Paint around these details here first. These will have to be a little recoat of um, paint afterwards. In here. Now this is mostly fulfills the purpose of a um, normal wash, it's like a sort of guiding coat. Uh, the normal washes here would probably be a bit rich for this, I want to keep it quite pale. So Okay, so the so-called guiding wash didn't provide much guidance, but thankfully the colour is pale enough so I can see uh, generally where to shade and highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep using this colour, heavily diluted. Because it's a foundation colour, it does tend to separate when it's diluted, so a quick mix with the brush solves that. And I'm just going to start kind of layering or blending as suitable. So into the recesses here and then blend it out to the edges. Just going to build this colour up. This is a bit different to doing this with the blue. The colour's a lot more dilute and I'm trying to build it up. Well, gradually I don't want this colour to take over while painting the turquoise, the highlights on the turquoise. I really wanted those to kind of transform the colour, make it more vivid. Just going to shade a little bit under these areas. Keep putting in the recesses around here. I mean, I will do a further wash when I paint these details, which hopefully I'll get done in this video. But a little bit more purple around there for now will be good. These little creases here, I'll put a little bit on dilute paint. And then later I'll probably just do fine line of the undiluted paint just to highlight how uh, how much of an indent they are. Keeping going with the same process, this time closer to the centre of the I guess in the clip. A 
this point, this is still fairly subtle. So I just want to see that I'm going in the right direction with this. So what I'm going to do is use some um, paint from the pot, only a tiny bit diluted and a proper brush. And then I'm just going to start painting in just kind of lines in some of the areas that are sort of detailed areas just to check this is going to be suitable this is wet in here if I paint into that it might go where it shouldn't so I'm dabbing the wet paint out Okay, definitely the right colour. I'm going to do partly thin down now. And then, see if we can get these recesses slightly stronger here without going too far. Okay, I think that works. I'll start building up. Um, do a first highlight will just be the base coat again just to get a, a kind of smooth fade back to the shade colour and then I'll build up with it the next colour. First uh, sort of re-highlight with the base coat. Keeping moving the model around to make sure I get the correct angle for the brush strokes. Part of the reason I'm doing this is because I do want this bit to be quite pale. You can always bring back more, more of the shade colour in the recesses if I, if I need to. On to the primary highlight, which should be a nicer, nice brighter version of that base coat. First thing I'm going to do is just paint some um, initial lines on the areas that were required. This was the bog standard heavy metal, I just leave that line and it'd be, oh right, you know, done this bit by layering or whatever. It needs to be smoother than that, boyos. But this gives you an idea where to start. So, paint, thin it down nicely, and start the same process apply and blend. This line gives me an idea of where to go now. And then just blend feather the edge of it. If it gets a bit too close to these details, that doesn't really matter because they will be sort of shaded around them later on. bits at the top are a bit awkward to blend, or feather rather, so I'll just kind of build up the highlights slowly with the diluted paint.
I went a bit too far here, so again using a damp brush, take that off and also to drag it down towards. It's not bad, it's quite subtle. To compensate for the um, suddenness of it, I'm going to bring a little bit more of the shade back into the, into the recesses. Uh, just going to paint a line of this. Get a little bit of colour on there. And this area here I went a bit too far. Just going to get a thin bit of paint. the advantage of using colours that are A, kind of fairly natural and B, um, you have to mix them so you can get a good, it's easy to kind of uh, redo bits. So now I am going to do a faint final highlight with a mixture of the pale purple and this kind of pale whitish, beigeish, creamish, whateverish colour. I'm going to get a little bit more brightness in there. I'm not going to put the line on first because this is quite pale, so I don't want it to be too abrupt. But we'll start with the edge here, like that, and then. So this sort of thing you do have to be quick on because you're only putting a little bit of paint on. So you got to work quickly to get a blend before it dries out. That's okay, it's quite, um, it's a bit more subtle than I hoped, but anyone who knows me in real life will know that subtlety is my middle name, so I guess it's not surprising. Good thing about being subtle though, if you want to increase the, uh, the colour, increase the contrast, it's easy to add a little bit more colour to it. This side I do need, definitely need a little bit more contrast, a little bit more highlight up here. So now the final bit is to just uh, finish the, the weed details, the weed tears and the cloak. Um, also to, to do a little bit of, of edging. I'll see what it's like with the, the pure pallid witch flesh. Maybe too bright, so I'm going to just do a little test area first. It's like, nope, that looks good to me. Again, this is one of the areas where you've got to be pretty fine, pretty controlled. Obviously, you don't want to do too much edge highlighting on the cloak, but the kind of the tattered edges, you know, have you, you want to kind of catch those. and stand out a bit. Particularly stuff like this where you have got a bit of detail on it.
Okay, as you can tell, that bit was uh, pretty fiddly, but I think it does brings it to life. It's quite nice detail on that. Uh, key tip for that is um, my sponsor, <laughs> Fiend Paint Like Fiend Studio sponsor, uh, Windsor and Newton Series Seven. Uh, now, having a, a good quality brush doesn't have to be super small, but good brush, keep it in good condition. Uh, when you're doing it, just have a little bit of paint on the tip, like so. Just paint little lines. Note, of course, I'm not sponsored by Windsor and Newton. I don't have a bloody studio either. Right, it's going to be a bonus feature next. Right, uh, before the details, I did do a little bit more uh, highlighting on here by the same techniques. I find this area just wasn't catching the light enough. Same a little bit down here as well. Uh, so, uh, demonstration of details. Don't be scared of details. They can be done quite easily. Uh, so I'm going to do belt, chains, the little symbols here, and also this little symbol which I painted in a dark green to hide the fact I think it's actually still a corn symbol, but don't tell anyone that. So, rebase coat did that already. I'm going to rebase coat these, show you how to do that neatly, and this. Then I'm going to wash the whole lot in a known oil, and I'm going to do it carefully. So, hopefully, you go into all these creases here, but not over on the model. Uh, if I err on the side of caution and don't do it enough, I can always dab a little bit more in there afterwards. Then, simple highlighting. These are much smaller areas, uh, so these can be highlighted very simply. This is slightly larger. But it's not a significant area compared to the, the armour and the sword and stuff. So again, you can uh, use a simpler highlights or shading on, on here as the model's not relying on that area to stand out so much. So, rebase coating. trick with this is to do it as if you were painting uh, detail work. So go along, follow the actual modeler details of the model along. Get the brush that's going almost to the join but not quite. So onto the wash, um, you might sort of wonder what do you do if you kind of go too far and onto the purple with this. Uh, I recommend wailing and gnashing of teeth, at least at first. Try and get it off quickly with a damp brush if you can. If you can't, you'll have to repaint it, I'm afraid. So being careful at this stage is pretty useful. Now the um, belt, you don't need to be so careful on because that is quite a large area. Uh, it doesn't matter if you go over on the flesh a little bit. Well, unless you've already painted the flesh, in which case you've got to be careful. When you get to the, the join of the model here, just bring it down a little bit into the crease with the tip of the brush. And these areas, sort of dab it along. You want a quite healthy bit in the middle of these. You see it's kind of filling up crevices nicely there and then along the side again run the brush along try and get a tiny bit in the crease but don't have it flowing on so it's a matter of just doing that repeating that for the detail heavy on the the top you can see I've gone too far just there thankfully washes take a while to dry so I can just clean my brush dab that out Okay, the wash took a long time to dry, but it's provided just the sort of boundary around those details already, which is good. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do gonna do the uh, the leather first. Uh, don't really need um, shading on that. 
So it's going to go straight into the bass tone to highlight it. Probably a couple of these layers and we'll do a bit of blending on. But I don't need to do much. And mix it with slightly lighter brown. So highlighting to the upper edge of the leather as well as a bit more towards the, the center of the model because the stuff under his arms would obviously be um, shaded by his arms. One thing if you do find this goes too pale or not a rich enough color it is pretty easy to bring back the color with a, a kind of a chestnut or brown wash. working with a dark colour like this those sort of washes can can bring back the colour nicely. So I'm going to move on to a, a lighter tone. So a little bit of edging just to accentuate the, the edges of the leather. And definitely go around these holes where the, the metal's through it. These holes will be punched through the, the leather and probably widen a bit so there would be a little bit of a gap there. Okay, so on top I'm going to use that colour again for another um, blended highlight, only a little bit here. don't even need to do this step but it's a pretty easy area it's a pretty easy paint to use finally quite a bit brighter color little nicks here so I'm going to make sure I leave a little gap around them a bit smoother along here like so just kind of provides a nice little contrast there metals again super simple here A bit of colour, a bit of silver, just layer it straight on to the upper bits. Like so. so you leave the um, leave the gaps where the wash has gone because that separates the, the chain links here. Make sure you kind of get catch all of the raised areas. It looks a bit weird if you left a couple dull. I've done that accidentally in the past. What I find here is the wash hasn't quite taken in a couple of areas, so I'm going to have to to put a little bit more wash on. I see some areas it's caught it quite well. These upper areas here hasn't caught it as well. there. Try not to cover the highlights you've done already. Obviously you can redo the highlights if needed. Gold bits going straight into. You see this? You see this? Who the hell mixes these paints? This one bloody idiot. Going to mix the uh, paint on my palette here. So straight into a brighter gold. Again, start to pick out the raised areas. A 
this stuff is far too small to do much blending on it and also in the metallics you wouldn't really see it anyway because the reflections and stuff would obscure that most important thing is just kind of picking out the detail neatly making it um, distinct from the rest of the model and showing the shape of the detail back with the silver up a couple of wee bits and I'm going to use this now as a, a sort of edge highlight on this now this you have to be more careful with if you put too much on you will uh, make it too silver and not gold enough so just running it down the edge of these spikes here the uh, wee jade symbol uh, this is going to be similar to the sword, but the sword I'll, I'll paint in a lot more detail. This, I just want to get a wee bit of paint on it. Yeah, this is not an important part of the model, it's a wee gem thing tucked away at the back, only visible from a certain angle. You just want to get a little bit of paint on it, show a little bit of detail. And for me it's also, it's providing harmonious colours with the rest of the model. This will match up with the sword, the gold matches up with the gold and the silver. There's enough varied colours on this model so it won't all blur into one mess of these colours. There's enough diversity so I try to keep these areas um, quite simple. There we go, details.